All right, so I'm gonna make a quick video. This is for, I think you pronounce your name, Joshua, I'm guessing. Um, but I figure I'll record this whole video and upload it to YouTube to help anybody else having these, like trying to figure this out. So this is how to hook up an MSD. Uh, mine specifically is a 6AL, but they all, they're all pretty much exactly the same. Um, to an RX-7 to run a dual wasted spark setup on your leading. So what a dual wasted spark is, is you have, um, basically you fire your leading spark plugs every single revolution. So, so you're getting, you're firing your, um, you're firing spark plugs that don't actually have any like fuel in the chamber. The, the combustion event was already done. So that's why it's called a wasted spark. And this is a dual cause there's two. So for the, for my setup, what I, what I want to do, cause I'm not controlling timing. I will eventually switch over to a different type of, um, like, um, I will eventually switch over to a different style of ignition where I'm going to use like an FC RX-7 CAS or I'll use like a Hall effect, um, like a Hall effect sensor and I can like wire into like I say like a Hall tech or uh, a fuel tech. I think fuel tech has the ability to do split timing as well. And I think it's fuel tech, Hall tech, and I know MoTeC can, but MoTeC's like out of reach of anybody, but I think fuel tech does like the 40, the 450s. Um, but for now, what I'm using is the stock distributor. And what I did is I took this to the stock distributor and I pulled out the, sorry, I had to lose the air out. <clears throat> so what I did is I took the stock distributor and I pulled the leading igniter out. And what you do is you pull that out. And so you unbolt it and it unplugs, right? And you have these little plugs inside right there. And what we're gonna do is you take the, get that focus. Uh, you pull this cover off right here, and there's like a gel inside, so I'll show you. I don't have one done because mine's all set up, but uh, um, actually, I wonder, do I have a case on mine? Let me see if I can pull mine off. I might not have a case on mine. Okay, so mine, uh, has. I put the backing plate back on, but I'll show a picture from uh, online. There's a, a diagram that just, it details how to do it, but you basically pull this, um, this off. It's just glued in. It's like you just pry it right out. And you take out all of the internal electricals, which is like the igniter inside of here, and you're just soldering two connections together. So you're basically connecting this right here with. this and this with this i believe or it might be the other way like this with this one and this one this one but i'll i'll dictate that in the photo on the screen right now okay so once you have that soldered in and hooked up that basically turns it's just it's just a magnetic pickup like any other normal distributor so you're basically you just turn that into the magnetic pickup and you're going to send that magnetic pickup signal which will be right here to your msd and that'll be your purple and your blue wires on the msd which i will oh i don't think i have my paperwork anymore but oh uh, wait hold on perfect i do have my uh setup um on the six al's it tells you inside here that's like oh you need to clip the wires in order to dictate the that is to like to change your rev limiter or whatever your rpm you don't need a rev limiter on this setup because you can't run the rev limiter so you don't need to clip anything just leave this as it is there's you're not you're not hooking up a rev limiter on this car because you're running you're still running your stock trailing ignition system you'll detonate your engine it'll it'll fuck up because you'll be still be igniting it with, with the trailing only and it's gonna just, just like do not set up two-step on this unless you have a relay system set up to cut your trailing while you do the two-step. So don't do that. Um, but it pays to uh, have uh, this. But anyway, okay. So I'll just go through with the wiring quick on here. So the heavy red is obviously just like battery positive. This just stays on to positive at all times. Heavy black is grounded at all times, negative battery, or like a block negative. Um, preferably you want to run these two to a 
big power junction or directly to the battery. You want that you want that pure voltage, you want you don't want anything. You you want just directly to the battery or to the closest thing possible. Don't just hook it up to any random power source. It needs to be at a junction point where you're like if you have like a pass through on the wall, kind of like how I have a pass through right there where you can hook up things that are to battery, you'll get a little bit of voltage drop, but like to battery would be like that junction point or the battery itself. Nowhere else don't hook up anything else. Red this is basically your 12 volt switched um, ignition. This can be, you know, a 18 gauge wire. This basically just turns the relay on inside the system to run. It's just 12 volt switched. You don't need to worry about it. It's 12.25 amp max. So it's very, very small amperage. Just run, you know, diffuse it for two amps if you want, but you shouldn't need to. Um, orange, this goes to the positive of your terminal. So you'll see like up here, I mean, I have mine wired into a disconnect. So you can see like, I can disconnect my coils from the system and pull everything out really easily. But basically, I have my orange hooked up to this red, and my uh, black, or is it, what color was it? Orange is positive, yeah, black, and then black goes to the negative of the terminal. So I have, I jumpered these two together. So you're going to jumper your positives together. I used 12-gauge uh, wire. You're going to jumper your two positives together. So you're positive, positive, negative, negative. So you're running them in parallel, basically. Um, or not basically, you are. Um, and uh, where I lost my train of thought. Yeah, and then you have your orange and your black. So you have your orange to the positive, black to the negative, and then you have these wired in parallel. And then each one of these coils feed one of the leading. It doesn't matter which one. Just, you know, you know kind of make it look as nice as you can. Hook it up in there. And then, after you do that, you have your trigger wires. So you don't need the trigger wires because this is uh, the, or, I'm sorry, you don't need the white trigger wire, which is your points system. So your white wire is for points. We don't have breaker points unless you have like a really old, um, the really old 12 A's with your uh, points from like, I don't remember if it, they stopped using them in 1980 or 81. I don't know, I don't know how to wire them, so I'm not going to speak on it. Just if you have the these type of igniters and you're doing this, you have a, you don't have breakers, you have igniters, which are, you know, those guys uh, and then the violet and green this is what you this is what we need so we're picking up the positive which is the, the violet and the green which is the negative from the uh, coil pickup so you'll have um, you'll see like here C and B I don't remember which one is which I'll put it up on screen though right now but you hook up your green to the uh, uh, negative and then your purple to the positive so purple and purple will go to one of these green will go to one of these and that will be your pickup for the uh, for your for your unit, which will fire your uh, coils. And then um, your gray is your tack output. So this will go to your like I have a tack right there. So you can use tack on there. You can use it to attack out on the aces unit. I ran um, coil negative just because I liked the. It seemed to run a little bit better than the CDI box. It did run, but it seems like it likes the trailing negative for some reason. I don't know if it's because of the timing of the fuel injectors firing or, or what, but it just seems to run better with negative trailing um, RPM signal from the coil itself, not from the CDI box. And then the red loop, blue loop, leave those. Completely ignore them, do not cut them unless you are unless you know what you're doing and I don't, I'm don't. i not messing with that, so that's up to you. I would just leave it, don't, don't use the rev limiter at all. So that is how you hook up the um, MSD box to run dual wasted spark and it's a really strong spark like I have had zero issues with pretty much anything uh, like follow plugs like it, it'll, it'll run pretty much everything um, I only followed out one set of plugs while I was learning to tune it because it was just like flooding out like crazy over and over and over again but other than that I've had zero issues these are still you can see there's got about a thousand miles on these spark plugs and that's from like tuning and doing all sorts of stuff so and then um the other thing is you want when you were when you're running the trailing <clears throat> electrical setup. So you'll have like uh, move some oil in there. Yeah, okay. um, <clears throat> you'll have your standard um, trailing igniter. So just leave this igniter exactly how it is. It's not going to be you're not like modifying it at all. Um, the wiring you're going to want to take your condenser, which is this little pill thing on the bottom. I have a secondary thing, which is this dude right here. You can see that this thing confused me forever. It's a little plug that comes out. You see that plug right there? That actually goes to 12 volts. So what that does is it condenses the um, <clears throat> it condenses the voltage spike from when the contacts like pass over. So like when you have your thing rotating, right, and it passes over your uh, 
uh, your <clears throat> excuse me, your pickup, and it's you know how it sends the voltage through, it jumps the gap, sends the voltage through the cap or whatever. That disconnect when it breaks, it voltage it spikes the voltage because you're like you know you're you're basically re it, it, it doesn't matter. You're, you're you're having you have a huge voltage spike, so that absorbs that. This, this is a condenser that absorbs that, and you need that because eventually you'll burn your igniter out on the trailing. So that gets wired into 12 volt positive. <clears throat> and I just ran just a stock system, just like right in there. One one coil goes right to my distributor, powers leading and trailing. Super easy. And that, that's how you run it. And it runs really good. And this way you can keep your so I know that some people will run like they'll they'll fire like the trailing and the leading at the same time, but you're kind of defeating the purpose of it. You you kind of want that you want a little bit of the split. It's good for burning the uh, gas better. It gives a little bit better f uh, fuel efficiency, and it does give you like negligible power gains when you're running the split timing. Now, if you're doing like race engines and shit, you want to like just limit on every single possible fail point. But then fine. I mean, you're probably running big peripheral ports and all all sorts of shit anyway, so you don't really need to worry about that. But so you really do want your split timing. Like it's it's important. So you don't want to run like a basically like fire both at the same time, where you would hook up all of these to the to the unit and just fire and fire and fire, and it's like. You don't want that. So that is, I think that's it. If you have any questions or I didn't answer anything and I forgot, let me know. Like comment down below. Um, shoot me a DM. You follow me on Instagram. Shoot me on there. Hopefully that helps, Joshua. Um, I think this will be a much better setup for you for running the Aces unit than trying to fuck with the the like like the one A or the one ignition a whatever the smart coils are with the end with the dual msds and then firing wasted on trailing like i wouldn't do that i think you're going to hurt your engine by doing that but uh yeah let me know if you have any questions peace